One of the most prominent questions about the Dahomey Empire has been whether they sold slaves to Europeans or not. It has become somewhat of a controversial question and it's not surprising that almost everyone has their own opinion on it. So in this video, we will dive into the history of the Dahomey Empire and its influence on the slave trade. But before we get into this, kindly subscribe to this channel and leave a like on this video. Thank you. The Dahomey Empire didn't just spring up from nothing, but went through a series of events that led them to become one of the most powerful kingdoms in West Africa. So, to better understand the history of this African kingdom, we need to take a step back and look at where its history began. The Dahomey hailed from a group called the Aja, a people indigenous to the southwestern part of Benin and the southeastern part of Togo. The oral history claims they arrived in southern Benin from Todo on the Mona River sometime between the 12th and 13th century. They formed the town of Alada, which bordered the Great Oyo Kingdom. It is believed that they mixed with the local population and formed the Fon ethnic group. And as with all great kingdoms, there was bound to be a power struggle of some sort. This struggle for power started between three brothers in 1625 and their fight split the kingdom into three. One brother moved inland and founded the town of Abome, which would later become the capital of Dahomey. Another took the coastal town of Ajachi, later renamed Porto Novo by the Portuguese slave traders. And the first brother took control of Alada. Alada controlled some coastal settlements where European traders were stationed. These coastal settlements set up the selling of slaves to the Europeans throughout the late 17th and early 18th century. This trade in slaves became the main source of revenue for Alada, which created an economic boom, but some of this revenue had to be paid to their Oyo overlords. By the end of the 17th century, Dahomey was an absolute monarchy. Unlike the surrounding traditional kingdoms, the king was believed to have divine power, which literally gave him the power to perform unspeakable acts like human sacrifices just to appease the old kings. The first prominent ruler of Dahomey, King Agaja, gained independence from the old Aja state of Alada in the 18th century through organized war. He created a new power center at Abome, its capital. Throughout the Homes War for Independence, they expanded their territory and captured people who became slaves. Those slaves worked on royal plantations and were later sold to Europeans in exchange for weapons. These weapons were given to elite warriors of the cane, including the famous Amazon warriors. But while Dahomey flourished, the coastal kingdom of Alada were in constant struggle with European traders who played one chief against the other. Alada became vulnerable because of these struggles, which gave the Dahomey the opportunity to expand to the coast to claim their share of the slave trade. Agaja's chance came in 1724 when Soso, king of Alada, died. Two of his brothers fought for the throne, and the loser asked Agaja for help. Agaja marched into Alada with his army. But instead of restoring his ally on the throne, he took over Alada and exiled both contenders. Agaja conquered the surrounding kingdoms, but this came at a cost. His expansion created tension between him and the powerful Oyo Empire, which ended in a war that lasted from 1726 to 1730. Agaja was no match for the mighty Oyo Empire, and it is believed that he burned down his capital and dispersed his subject to try to deter the enemy with little success. But in the end, Agaja lost the war. He was forced to sign a peace treaty, accept Oyo's rule, pay annual tribute and move his capital from Adome to Alada. Agaja quickly re-established his relationship with the Europeans, where he continued to sell slaves in exchange for guns and a safe passage of European slave traders. But the Oyo Empire invaded again because Agaja failed to pay tribute. Agaja fled and died in 1740. After his death, his son succeeded him, who also continued to sell slaves to European traders when he found out that the treasury was empty. By 1750, the slave trade was efficiently organized and it looked as if it solved Dahomey's problems. While the other parts of the Oyo Empire were disintegrating, Dahomey stood firm. By the end of the 18th century, marked a decline. Slaves from the Oyo Kingdom were being diverted from the Dahomey port and foreign raids were unable to capture sufficient number of slaves in the depleted northern region. At the same time, demand in Europe was going down. First, because of the chaos caused by the wars and then because Britain ended the slave trade in 1808. 
In recent years, historians have been trying to understand rather than pass judgment on the practices of human sacrifices and the large-scale trade in slaves that were common in Aja Kingdom. There is no doubt that Dahomey created a strong bureaucracy that protected its citizens, but that was a two-edged sword. Their will for independence led to their over-reliance on European weapons, which ultimately led them to continue the age-old trade of slaves, but at an industrial level, which resulted in increased demand throughout Europe. It appears that the leaders of Fawn reluctantly entered the trade, but as a result, they became dependent on it in order to acquire weapons. They thought that the only way out of their situation was either make other people slaves or become slaves themselves. What are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comment section. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.